All right, so we're up to key issue three. We're going to take a look at why inner cities face distinctive challenges. And there's three that are listed. We're going to look at the first one, which is physical issues. What we start seeing happen in the, uh, downtown areas, in these inner city areas, is deterioration. We start seeing the area not cared for. What happens is a lot of the wealthy move out of this area. And for the people that own the property to make their money back, they have to put more people into a smaller area. So because they can't get people willing to pay a high price to live there, they got to get a lot more people to pay a smaller amount. So you're shoving a lot of people into a smaller area. Because of that, these owners are getting less money. They don't show the care and concern into the area as much. They don't fix up the businesses or the apartments or the roads or the streets as much. The city now is not getting as much tax money, so they're not putting the money into that area. And you see the areas start to call what we say is fall in. Well, one of the other problems that comes along is something called redlining. And traditionally, they used to use like a red marker or pen, and they'll look at sections of a city, and banks and financial institutions will draw a red line around a certain area, and they won't give loans to that area. So just even if you have the money in that area, they look where you live and they figure you don't have the money. Or the landowner doesn't have the ability to pay back that loan. So these areas just continue to fall in. So is there help? That's what a lot of cities try to figure out. One of the things is something called urban renewal. And what cities do is they try to allocate funds into these areas and fix them up. Maybe put new streetscaping, give business loans for businesses to fix themselves up give tax incentives to let businesses move in there. Maybe put stadiums in or arenas in to try to bring better uh, money into the area. We also will see public housing. And what public housing is, the government will build apartments and then give them at a lower rate using tax money to subsidize. So public housing basically says instead of the rent being $900 a month, they'll charge families $400 a month and $500 will be covered by the taxpayers. That way you have people living in an area they tend to take care of the area a lot more and you don't have as many uh, people ending up homeless because they can't afford the rent. Another thing is something called gentrification. This is with, when people with money move into an area and fix it up. The problem with gentrification is a lot of times it runs the poor people out. So people will start going into a poor neighborhood, buying houses, fixing them up because they get it for nothing, and then more people go into that neighborhood, buy up the houses, fix them up. But what happens is the money starts pouring into the area the poor people can't afford to live there any longer, so then it becomes a middle or upper class area. So there are negatives with sometimes fixing up these areas. A second issue that our textbook talks about that inner cities have a problem with is social issues. Basically, we see what happen is an underclass gets stuck in the cycle of poverty, and because of that, it doesn't improve the area. In a way, this is unofficial segregation we will see that we have certain Hispanic neighborhoods, we'll have black neighborhoods. And what happens in those areas is that a lot of times the schools aren't as better as in the suburbs. So people aren't as getting as good of an education. They're not surrounded by good structure that helps people improve. And this is something cities try to fix. The problem is, again, you have a lack of tax money in that area. And how do you change a cycle of poverty? People are used to living in this cycle. They, they not know any better. They may not know how to get out of it. If you don't have a lot of education and good background and good training, how do you get a better job? So that's another problem that we start seeing in our cities is the social issues of this cycle of poverty that a lot of people can't seem to get out of. A third issue that we're going to see is an economic one, and that's the eroding tax base. Now, we've already kind of talked about this through the other two. As the wealthy move out of these downtown areas, and the poor move in, the city has less money to spend in that area. So they're going to have to cut back on schools, and schools don't get the same funding. The streets aren't going to be maintained. You're not going to have great landscaping, or there'll be potholes, or they're not going to be repaired like they need to be. Buildings are going to start falling in and crumbling, and there'll be nobody there to enforce zoning regulations to make sure that they're up to code and being maintained properly. You're going to lose the libraries in that area because the tax money's not coming in to be able to support them. So this is another issue that comes about with these inner city areas that has to be looked at and examined. And again, a lot of cities, as mentioned earlier, will try to do some kind of urban renewal to bring money in to try to fix up the areas. Again, a side effect of that is sometimes the areas get fixed up and the poorer people can't afford to live there any longer.